again. Welcome back to the Money Corner. I don't think you'll be surprised when you look at the calendar and see April 15th that the Money Corner will talk about taxes, income taxes, for the next three weeks. My guests tonight are men who have excellent credentials in that area. On my right is a neighbor of yours from Leonia, Victor Leonardo, certified public accountant who runs an accounting firm in Ridgefield, Ridgefield, New Jersey. Fine, fine, Phil. I, I usually foul that up and say he works in Ridgefield Park. That's why he's complimenting me. Uh, Vic is uh, formerly a member of one of the large accounting firms when he first started in the business. He worked for the Arthur Young Company, and he also had the very eminent position of being chairman of the accounting department at St. Peter's College in Jersey City for many years prior to going into private practice. And on Vic's right is David Milstein of Coopers and Librand, one of the big eight. David lives in Fort Lee, and he's a partner in the Newark office of Coopers and Librand. Gentlemen. Welcome to the Money Corner. Thank you for being with me. Okay. Um, this is a time of the year when everybody's involved in income tax. This is a time of full employment for you, and you, you both work hard. Uh, David, I, in Coopers and Librand, now I know Vic has very diversified practice and, and hits many ranges of people, but one of the, the big eight, I tend to think of them as accounts who serve large corporate accounts. Do you people serve individuals as well and, and get involved in income tax level on the individual level? Oh, surely, Phil. Um, uh, the individual clients that we handle uh, start, uh, I guess, with the executives of our corporate clients, uh, but it filters down to individuals who are not related to any of our corporate clients that we have dealt with in the past or have come to us to, uh, to assist them in their work. I, I think that your profession, both of you can respond, I think your profession is becoming stereotyped because now we hear the uh, HR blocks is it and, and the mass accounting firms and many, many people have uh, friends who are knowledgeable in the area. In some cases, I think filling out an income tax form has become a, a kind of hit and miss thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure on your level, you both are involved in professionalizing that whole process. It's been, you know, so complex that these organizations have uh, survived that way. And uh, that's the unfortunate thing about it, that the tax law is so complex that people have to hire uh, individuals like uh, Cooper's Library and firms like my own. Well, that's not that. unf unfortunate well, for sure of revenue. Yeah. Well, well, well uh, except that when you look at it, it, uh, it there's, there's something to be said about it, that a tax law that's trying to collect revenue should, shouldn't be simplified. And I think there's uh, some push in uh, Congress about that. I, th I think the, uh, the firms like H&R Block and the other uh, mass marketers uh, uh, do provide a, a good service for a, a, a group of, uh, mm -hmm. of taxpayers. Uh, does not where, where the needs are very simple and very elementary and, and are not complex. Right. Uh, uh, the question I always have in my mind is how do the taxpayers know uh, if they're in a simple situation or not. And uh, I, I think it does take some awareness uh, on the part of the individual taxpayer uh, to really make the proper decision uh, as to where to go uh, for assistance with his or her return. And hopefully they're making the right choice. I, I understand that. I was a little surprised. Uh, as a stockbroker, I get increasingly involved in tax planning, which influences mm -hmm. investment decisions, particularly as we get into the business of tax shelters, which I want to talk to you mm -hmm. about in one of these segments. Um, and I'm surprised in terms of many of the subtleties that my clients don't know about in terms of taxes, which I consider rather elementary. And I am not a professional in the area of taxes. I respect using a professional and working with professionals like you. I think you're getting to a, a good point uh, that, that you, uh, you alluded to, Phil. Uh, the, the planning aspect of, of taxation is, is critical. Uh, the preparation of a tax return is uh, really uh, working with historical facts and presenting those facts on a piece of paper, which is a 1040, and which is submitted to the government. Uh, there is little uh, creativity or little planning available at that point in time. Uh, the, uh, the, the maximum benefit can be obtained uh, by knowing the tax rules and working with those rules during the year so that when it does come time, uh, to report what did happen during the year, uh, the best tax posture uh, will have been obtained for that year. And perhaps that is where uh, the mass marketers who just do the compliance work and report those historical facts uh, differ from firms such as ours. Uh, who uh, fellas, are let's let's explore that point in a little depth. We're going to pause for a moment for an announcement. Stay with us, please, and we'll be back with you in just a moment. Dave, just before we pause for a commercial, you made the comment that uh, tax planning is important. Obviously it is if it enables the taxpayer to in effect uh, save money on his taxes. Uh, let's try and get into that in a little more detail. Does the accountant then take on a, a secondary kind of function 
uh, which, and obviously he does, he becomes a person who does far more than in effect compile figures and, and fill out a return. Yes, Do, Phil. Uh, go ahead, either one. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I think that the maximum benefit that uh, one's accountant can provide is to be uh, have that person, the accountant, included in on uh, discussions and transactions uh, during the year so that tax considerations can be given uh, uh, full, uh, full discussion. Uh, do, you so do you find that clients tend to make you privy to their decisions as they go along, or is that something that clients have to be educated to? I think most of them uh, do, and I think uh, you start with uh, you know, your initial interview with them when you, you first engaged as a, uh, their accountant, and then after the tax return is the result or the historical factor and the taxpayer is paying maybe an unreasonable tax and you could see where you can tax plan for them. That's where the suggestions come in. So that our work would continue right into the year 83 based on our knowledge that has been gathered in 82. But the tax planning aspect is very, very important so that when the final date of making up the tax return, it becomes academic. Well, I, I'd, like, I'd like you to both be more direct. Uh, the purpose of this program is essentially to educate the viewer sure. in terms of how to be smarter in, in handling his taxes. Well, well, as far as you're concerned, yeah, you, you know, as far as your business is concerned, the, there's a, uh, you know, when gains are made uh, and the individual is holding some paper losses, the timeliness of, of selling those particular stocks uh, so that you can cover your gain where it would be an advantage as far as tax reasons are concerned. And then letting the uh, taxpayer know that uh, within 30, 30 days after that period of time, you can go back into the stock. Uh, things like that as far as stocks are concerned, as far as sheltering, uh, uh, as far as tax shelters are concerned, you can minimize some of the tax liability. What you're doing is you're you're, you're, you're not reducing the thing. What you, what you primarily try to do is to reduce the tax or defer the tax, okay? Eventually, the individual should be paying the fair tax based on what his return is. And that's, that's what your planner is trying to do, to reduce the tax or to defer it. That's the two best things that you can do. There, there are many examples that come to mind, uh, you know, Vic. Um, I, I'm sure. I, I want to hold off on examples. I'm thinking of another thing. My, my impression is most people view the professional, be he the dentist, the attorney, the accountant. If we go see that guy, we're going to have to pay him money. So every time I go near him, he's going to cost me money. Uh, they don't see it as a, as a necessarily as a savings function, but they see it as, as a, an expense function. And I'm just wondering if, uh, in the long run, you can really uh, convince the client that he can save money by using you as a consultant long before he ever gets on the tax return. Uh, so that, that's a rather different kind of relationship. Well, the, the bulk of our work uh, is of a uh, recurring type, uh, uh, from recurring relationships. Uh, we do not make money uh, just dealing with a person for one year, uh, either doing his tax return or getting involved with his uh, business operations. Dave, you have a, a knack <laughs> of responding just when we're at the end of a segment. Okay. We've concluded the first segment. We'll be back with you on the Money Corner next Friday and Saturday. Have a good weekend. Thank you for being with us tonight.